Hi everyone, Dave Rogers here, CEV commentator, still at home, still quarantined, but still really enjoying the chance to pass the time by catching up with some of my good friends in volleyball. Make sure you do the same as well. Catch up with your friends and your family, let them know you're doing okay, and uh, see if there's anything you can do to help them out as well. Speaking of helping out, help me out by liking and sharing this video, sending it to anyone who you think might appreciate it. Today, I've spoken to a legend. Olympic gold medal? Check. Champions League gold medal? Check. Captain of his club and country? Check. Um, he's a brilliant guy and he is doing everything he can to make sure people in his home nation get through this mess, but he's also really looking forward to getting on the court. Maybe as much as I'm looking forward to seeing him on the court as well. It's Bruno. Enjoy. Ah, Bruno. Great to see you. How are Hello, you? Dave. Good, good to see you too. How are you? Yes, mate. I'm very, very well, but I've been at home for too long and I'm a little bit bored, so I'm looking to catch up with some cool people and just find out how you're doing, really. So first things first, how are you coping? Where in the world are you and who are you with? Oh, I'm uh, alone in this moment in Italy and in Civitanova, and, uh, but I'm trying to, to be healthy, uh, doing my my workouts with with the team in the, the zoom application so uh we have uh, like uh, doing uh, some great time at least uh, for one hour uh, in the day and uh, the other in the rest of the day i'm trying to to read some books or to watch some series and and try to to be to be okay in the in this difficult moment a little bit boring but uh, difficult <laughs> moment well, I'm terrible at reading books, but I'm good at watching series. What series are you watching at the moment? I watched a lot of series uh, about sports. No, uh, I finished that uh, on Netflix uh, for the Formula One. Was ah. it's really nice. I uh, uh, it's a good advice for everyone that likes sports and wants to to understand the the the. the the, the sports in general and have a lot of in the prime video in Amazon okay. that all or nothing with some teams like Manchester City in football or some American football teams so it's uh, really nice for for uh, who wants to to understand and to be inside of a, of a, a sport team I'm a Manchester United supporter, so we don't talk about Manchester City. They're, yeah. they're off limits. <laughs> Sorry, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were talking about doing the workouts with the team. So you guys are all managing to stay close together, even though you're, you're separated by the quarantine. Yeah, we are, we are just uh, uh, like uh, 18 days without a practice, like live practice. So it's not easy because... Uh, we we were like a family, everybody together every day, and uh, even uh, outside from the court, we went to dinner or we went to to have a, a party or a lunch or something. And now we just have to 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 be in FaceTime, you know, doing some some uh, recordings or something, some videos, and uh, that just the, the the way that we can uh, be a little bit together in this moment. 18 days feels like a long time without something that you're so used to, doesn't it? What is it you're missing most about it? Is it actually getting out on the court or is it the practice or is it seeing the guys? What are you missing most? I, I think in this moment, it's difficult even to, to think about volleyball. I, I just think in, uh, in this, the, the closest uh, like relations that we made in our team, you know, and that's really difficult in this moment to uh, to be separated of, of, of them, even in my family, my family is in Brazil. So I think that's the most thing that I, I really, I really miss. And uh, in this moment, I, I'm not thinking too much in volleyball, even because we have so much things to, to take care in this moment. So uh, it's, it's my second plan. Of course, I, I love to play, I love to, to practice, but in this moment, I, I miss more these relations with my, with the guys that I, I love, with my family, and, and that's it. 
Yeah, so important to make sure that your priorities are right at these times as well. Uh, in fact, I saw uh, on Instagram today that you're uh, part of, um, is it like a charity or is it an appeal where some of the big Brazilian sports stars have all got together? Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, we made like a found foundation, like just our, we are in five friends and we have uh, that uh, everybody knows, uh, Neymar and Gabriel Medina, the surf, surfer guy. Yeah. And, and other three friends, and uh, we d donate some uh, money for for uh, because we are really worried uh, with the coronavirus mm -hmm. arriving in uh, in our uh, poor communities, you know, in favelas and everything. So we try to do this, uh, and we already have uh, more than uh, for. Uh, 400,000 uh, euros, oh, wow. so it's something, it's something big. We are not asking for other people, but we are trying to uh, start this thing for other, maybe other uh, companies or some, someone that wants to, to, to do something uh, for these uh, poor communities. And we are trying to do this to help them because uh, maybe they, they don't have money even to, to uh, buy uh, an auto gel or something or a soap or soap. So in this moment, we we just have to try to uh, to help uh, people that cannot uh, have the same opportunities that that, that does. So I think was a, a idea that we had, and um, it's it's just something that we can uh, to to help these uh, these people. Uh, I hope that goes well. I mean, we take it for granted, don't we? You you said you're at home on your own and I'm here in my apartment with one other person and we can stay away. But of course, in Brazil, with the favelas, so many people so close together, um, yeah. it's amazing that you're, that you're trying to make a difference. I do I do hope that goes well. That's um, That sounds pretty awesome. What did you say, 400,000 euros already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just about... We are in six friends and some families. You know, you know our our families. Some, uh, my father helps too. So just closest friends to to help this, and we hope that more people we can inspire uh, more people to to try to to look for the other other people to to look for for these uh, uh, these communities and uh, let's try to do something for for our country. Now, I know you said that volleyball was kind of at the back of your mind, but we have had the news that now we know when the Olympic competition is going to be. 23rd of July, 2021. Does that change your plans at all, or are you still going full steam ahead for Olympic volleyball? No, nothing changed. Um, now I think uh, it's, it's, it's better because now we have the time to prepare because in this moment... Uh, we were at home and uh, imagine to play uh, Olympic Games in about three months mm -hmm. after stay, you know, uh, at home like for two months without good practice. So mm -hmm. now we have time to prepare uh, physically, you know, inside of the court and even mentally. So I think we'll be uh, next year will be awesome to be in Tokyo and uh, I hope to arrive there in, uh, in the best shape as possible and uh, maybe our Brazilian team can uh, take another, another medal for, for our country. Yeah, you do quite well at the Olympics. You know, I was just going to take a drink and I've got my, uh, I've got my Rio oh, nice, 2016. <laughs> yeah, you like that? In fact, mate, I knew I was speaking to you. So I don't have um, a volleyball, but I was at, ah, okay. the, I was at the handball championships okay. back in 2016 nice. incredible memories however um the the brazilians the locals they played some tricks on me so i don't speak any portuguese i don't speak any brazilian portuguese so i asked for uh, i asked for a few tips and they said when you introduce yourself to a lady you have to say fala chuchuca <laughs> it's like uh, like uh, it's difficult to say. I don't know a, a word in in, uh, in, uh, in English like uh, "hello," I don't know, like "sexy girl" or something like that. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's not like it, it's it's a little bit uh, strange to to say someone when you were introduced. 
Basically, but, um, I'd say it to people, then either they just laugh in my face or they'd be like, oh my God, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other one, and they never told me what it means. So, and uh, this, again, this went down so badly. They say, if someone asks you a question and you're not sure, you say, Gage, what does that mean? Uh, again, again, sorry. Uh, so when somebody asks you a question yes. and you're not sure of the yes. answer, you say, Kage. <laughs> it's like, uh, 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 sh like I'm taking. Oh shit. no! I, I don't care. Like, I don't care. You know? <laughs> oh man, they've stitched me up so <laughs> badly. Yeah, you know if you. <laughs> and maybe they will they will tell you like, oh, this English guy is. It's not uh, so polite, eh? uh, man. Yeah, they yeah that's me, man. Sorry, so, man. Uh, mate, I'm, I'm just <laughs> glad you've managed to clear that up for me. Thank you. And the people who told me, <laughs> I'm going to call you guys. You're in trouble. Um, yeah. but you talked about uh, you talked about your Brazilian friends in sport who mm -hmm. have come and made a massive impact in Europe yourself and Neymar and over here in England, we've got Brazilians playing football in the Premier League. Um, and we've got this opinion of Brazilians that you're incredible at sport, but you've got this awesome culture and this awesome sort of charisma about you. Do you feel like you've got to sort of fly that Brazilian flag when you're representing your club team and when you're playing sport in Europe? Yes, I think that uh, uh, when we are playing, uh, even for our national team, or maybe in Premier League, these Brazilian guys, uh, I think they, we have the support of, uh, you know, of every, every Brazilian, you know, guy, every Brazilian people. Imagine one guy like Gabriel Jesus that uh, came from a favela in, uh, in uh, Sao Paulo, and now he's in one of the best teams in the yeah. world. In, so he, he's an inspiration for every uh, Brazilian, uh, you know, child. So yeah. um, when we, we are there, it's like uh, I really care about my people and I really try to, to have this support and to get this energy to inspire my, you know, uh, the children that maybe one day they, they dream to, to be in a, in a on Olympic Games or to play in, a, in Europe for like a... Yeah. the best league in the world like in Italy. So, leading on from that then, what made you come to Europe? Sorry? What made you come to Europe? Why did you come and play in Italy? Because uh, I always uh, had this dream to play in Europe and uh, the Italian league is the best in the world. So. Uh, for my preparation to to my biggest dream in the world, it's like uh, to play in the best league. But to win a gold medal in uh, Rio 2016, yeah. I thought that coming to Italy and playing the best league in the world with the best players in the world uh, could could be like a a, a really good uh, improvement for my career. You know, and uh, playing Champions League against the biggest teams in the world in, in Europe. So. Uh, I tried to to understand what was really important for my career, and uh, for sure, Italy was the, my first choice. And uh, now uh, I understood uh, how important was this uh, to come to Italy and to play in this level to uh, achieve my goals and uh, and to to improve uh, my 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 game, you know and. Uh, I'm really happy and, and proud of, of this choice that I made like seven, eight years ago. It's amazing hearing a guy with three Olympic medals who won a gold in Rio talking about making improvements to his career. I think it just shows how ambitious you are. I'm, I'm going to show you a video and I want you okay. to just let me know any memories it brings up or, or let me know how this, uh, how this video makes you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, one of the best memories in these uh, best years because oh, I have, you know, <laughs> you understand that my, uh, just to feel this again, it's, uh, 
big emotions. Like to, to win a Champions League was one of my, my biggest dreams in, in my career. And uh, we started this season with a lot of problems, and, uh, but we never give up. This team really deserved this, uh, to finish this season with this title, you know, and it was a really beautiful uh, spectacle for everybody, you know, in a beautiful hall, you know, uh, playing against the best team that Kazan, against the best players in the world. So it was incredible that uh, that moment that we uh, we had there. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm now I'm nostalgic, like to, to think about these emotions and was one of my the best uh, memories I had in, uh, in volleyball, in the volleyball. Was it more special because it was against Kazan and they've been so dominant in the Champions League for such a long amount of time? Oh, for sure, this uh, makes your, uh, like, your title even bigger, you know, because you are playing against uh, one of the most important teams in the decade. So, uh, for sure. And um, with that crowd, you know, everybody there, and even my family was there. So, it was really special that moment. A lot of Italians... Uh, fans for, of Lube uh, went there, you know, it was, it was incredible. It was a, a beautiful spectacle for everybody and uh, it was amazing. What are the supporters like then? Because, again, from us in the United Kingdom, we see Italian sports supporters and Brazilian sports supporters as two of the most passionate, but in a, in a very different way. How have the supporters mm -hmm. welcomed you since you moved to Italy? Oh, I think you have some difference, but uh, both of them are really passionate, like you, you say, no? And uh, here in Italy, they, they love volleyball. Uh, you can see uh, in the city that where we live, how much they have this uh, uh, passion with us, even when we are in the, in the street, like how much they care for, for our team, for us. So uh, it's nothing better that uh, feel this thing you know and uh, play with this with these fans that are so passionate i think it's it, it's a motivation that we have to enter in the court and and make the best uh, uh, the best job that you can do you know for them too because um, they are uh, really a, a big motivation for us and are you looking forward to to getting back out there and putting on a show for them yeah yeah that's one of the things that I miss too, and uh, sometimes I have a, a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm not worried, but scared. Maybe I don't know if we had uh, this opportunity again. You know, so um, I was dreaming. I don't know one month ago to to come back to Berlin to the Super Finals of the mm. Champions League, and we were in the in the quarterfinal. We, we won the first match against uh, Roselar. And uh, after that, all this, uh, this problem with the coronavirus started. So now uh, it's, it's different because we don't know what will happen. This, um, this, that when you don't know about information, it's so difficult to, to go. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit scared because maybe I, I will not have another opportunity to, to play for them. One day, mate, when the time's right, when the time's yeah, right, we'll yeah, all be back. Sure. And, and I can't wait. As a commentator, I can't wait to see you play. I can't wait to, to hear and feel the fans' reaction. And I just feel as though when we do get the chance to do whatever we do within the sport again, it's just going to feel so special. Yeah, for sure. I think we now, after all these uh, difficult moments that we are uh, going through, uh, I think we... We'll, we'll like uh, everything, will, it's gonna be more valuable, you know. Everything we're gonna uh, do with uh, more passion because uh, we understood what is not have these things anymore, you know, for a long time. So when we come back, we just want to, to enjoy all that moments, and uh, for sure, will be, will be amazing. And uh, I hope that uh, it will be in a, in a not to to far moments you know maybe let's see yeah i hope so uh, right bruno you are a busy man thank you so much for your time before you go can we play a couple of okay. games is that okay
Yes, let's go. Okay, right. The first, the first one. It's just a, um, just a quick fire game. I'm going to say a word or a, a give you a choice, and you are going to say the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. 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 First thing in the quick fire round, Rio. Gold medal. Italy. Second, second house. Berlin. Emotion. Brigadiero or tiramisu? Brigadiero. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Serving an ace or making a block? Making a block because it's difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the videos. It's not that difficult. Um, if you could play another sport for Brazil that wasn't volleyball, what would it be? Football, for sure. Are oh, you a big football man? Okay. And which Brazilian who isn't a volleyball player do you think would make a great volleyball player? Uh... I think uh, Alison Becker, the goalkeeper oh, of yeah. Liverpool. I yeah. think he could be a good, uh, good volleyball player. Thank you very much. Obrigado. And um, sorry, when they have the super finals in Berlin, I will see you there. Deal? Okay, let's see. Yeah, good man. See you. Bye bye, bye Dave. Bye. Thanks very see much. You. Good man. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.